everybody, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people on social media know me as ZA Reptiles. We're doing something a little different today, we're trying a different camera. We're using my photography camera, which I've never used for filming before. My camera that I do use for filming, the battery died when I was attempting to film this video. And having just moved, I don't know where my charger is for those batteries or my spare battery. They might not even be here, they might still be at my parents' house. So, in an attempt to not film on my phone and to keep moving in a forward progressive direction with my videos, we're going to use my photography camera and see how it goes. So wish me luck. So it is fall. It is fall expo season. So what better video to do with me going to an expo in about a week than to prep? How do you tackle your first expo? Or maybe it's not your first expo. How do you efficiently go about an expo? What are my tips? So, let's get into it. But before we get too far, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, I did get in a fight with a car door. Yes, it won. I lost. I don't want to talk about it. But yes, I do have a nice gash on my head. Moving on. Okay, so 10 tips, 10 tips for tackling a reptile expo. Let's go. Okay, so tip number one is to go early. Yes, it's probably going to be a little crazy, but if you're going to either look for a certain animal or you just want to go and look around and see some variety, going early is your best bet because the people that are trying to buy things and have certain things they're looking for, maybe things that there aren't a lot of, they're going to be there early to get first dibs. So if you're someone who's trying to get first dibs on an animal, or you just want to see good variety and just see all the different animals, going early is going to be your best bet. The later you go, the more empty the tables are going to be. And for an event like, say, Tinley Park, NARBC Tinley Park, you can go later on the last day, you're still going to see some cool things. For me, my local expos up here, they're pretty small. If you go towards the end of the day, it's going to be a lot less exciting than in the morning. And that kind of leads me into tip number two, go with a plan. There's nothing worse than going into an expo with zero plan whatsoever because that's how you get into trouble. So go with a plan. Do you have a certain amount of money you want to spend? Are there certain things you're planning on buying? Is there a certain animal you're looking for? In which case you have to make sure you're ready at home before you go and get that animal. Things to think about. Tip number three, bring cash. It's very easy to mindlessly swipe a card. It's much better when you have a certain limit, when you have cash. When you spend it, it's gone. It makes you a lot more aware of what you're spending it on and a lot more cautious. So you're not just gonna spend willy-nilly. If you only have a hundred bucks and you wanna get a whole slew of cork bark for enclosures you're doing at home, you probably don't wanna go and spend $70 on this snake over here you had no intentions of getting coming in but you just saw it because now if you get that $70 snake you can't buy $70 worth of Kirk Park if you only have $100. See what I'm saying? This is what happened to me at the last expo. It really helped. I started with Quirk Bark first. I got huge Quirk Bark like branches and tubes for my gecko enclosures and it cost me about $100 which is pretty much what I bought, brought to the expo. So, yeah, it wasn't a very exciting expo for me. There wasn't a lot of money spending other than Quirk Park. Number four, and this is one that I have heard people like say all the time, like, wow, that's such a great idea. I never thought about this. So really, it should be like number one on the list is bring a reusable shopping bag, especially if you plan on getting things. There's nothing worse than walking around an expo with arms full of things. You got bugs, plants, cork bark, maybe a new animal, some art that you found at Adeline Robinson's table. You don't want to have to carry all that in your arms. And yes, some vendors will have bags, but it's just so much easier to bring your own reusable bags. I always bring one little one and one ginormous one. So if I'm just getting like an animal or some artwork or some bugs, I have my little reusable shopping bag and I'm getting cork bark or hides or water dishes or anything like that, I've got my big bag. 
And the greatest part is if I have a purse with me or something, I can take those bags, fold them real small, just shove them in my purse until I need them. Also, if you bring a significant other with you, they might carry the bag for you. Well, another little tip for you. Number five, let's say you plan on getting an animal. Being well prepared and well researched is key. Not just on the animal, but who you're buying from. So I'm the type of person that will always look up a menu from a restaurant before going to the restaurant and like have a plan. We get there and I already like know what I want or I've narrowed down my choices. I am the same way with reptile expos. I want a list of those vendors. I want links to their Facebook pages, Instagram pages, websites. I want to see what they're selling, what their price ranges are, because I want to know. I want to have a plan. You know, am I going to run in there bright and early at 10 a.m. and see nothing but ball pythons? Or, oh my gosh, is there a table selling milk frogs and I'm going to run in and book it to that table? I want to know these things. So if you plan on taking home an animal, Research the vendors. Most expos will list their vendors either on their website, on Facebook, something like that, so you can see who's going to be there. If you're looking for a ball python, look at the ball python vendors. Look at their reviews. Because this way, you don't just show up and buy an animal from someone you've never heard of before, go home and find out that they're not that great and they've got bad reviews. Been there, done that. So, from personal experience, Research the vendors, have an idea going in of who's a really good vendor, who's a good breeder, which tables don't align with your standards of reptile keeping, and so know which ones not to give your support to, which ones to. This will just make buying an animal a lot smoother of a process because you'll know, odds are, you're going to get a healthier animal, you're going to get a higher quality animal because you'll know which vendors, which breeders are the ones you should be supporting and shopping from in order to make that happen. Number six kind of bounces off of that. Look over the animals. So even if you don't research your vendors or maybe you don't research all of them, you just look at a couple of them and then you get there, you find an animal you want but you don't really know anything about the vendor. Look over the animals, not just the one you're interested in, but all of them. Do they look healthy or do they look skinny, underweight, are there, do they have mites, do they not have mites, are their eyes, nose, cloaca, are they clear, or is there like some questionable things going on. So look over all of the animals. Number seven, and perhaps my best tip besides the reusable bag, and the one that I always regret when I get to an expo, but I know it's in my best interest. Tip number seven is to have an accountability partner, whether it's a significant other, a sibling, a friend, someone that comes with you to the expo that reminds you of why you're there, what your goals are, maybe even let them hold onto your wallet. That's what I did at an expo after my college graduation because you know I got that graduation money. Next day we went to an expo and my boyfriend was like, mm, yeah, give me that wallet. So he held onto the wallet and refused to give it up even when I saw a black cow snake that I really, really, really wanted. He refused to give me the wallet because he knew we were not there to buy animals. We were there just to look and enjoy. They wanted to get bugs or artwork or something fine, but we were not there to buy animals. Number eight, we're kind of backtracking to the research a little bit. So we said research your vendors, your breeders, Research any species you may be potentially interested in working in or working with because let's be real when you go to an expo odds are you are going to be tempted to buy things you maybe weren't planning on buying. Maybe you showed up and a vendor or a breeder had an animal you really want but you didn't know they were going to be there. It happens. It happens to the best of us happened to me. So if there are any animals you are interested in potentially owning, doing research ahead of time that way when you see an animal in the expo, if you really 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 want to take it home, you already have a good base on how to care for that animal. So it's not just a complete impulse buy, okay I have it, now what do I do with it? I have no idea what I'm doing. If you have a good knowledge, like I've got a list of species in my head I'm keeping my eye out for for education programs. I've been doing my research that way. If I come across that animal, I can be like, boom, here's the animal. I know how to care for it. Let's go. Number nine, and 
This one you wouldn't think about, but it has helped me a lot. Get business cards. If you buy an animal, get a business card. If you're thinking about an animal, get a business card. Whatever you do, get a business card from the breeders at the expo because there's nothing worse than getting home and having a question or wanting to look them up and being like, shoot, I don't remember their name. I don't remember their name. Get business cards, okay? Now, this is where I can give you another little tip. If a vendor or breeder doesn't have business cards, red flag, maybe they ran out, it happens, whatever, but if they say, oh no, we don't have business cards, mm, red flag, okay? My experience with this is the ones that are selling mass amounts of wild caught animals that are usually sick, those are the ones I've seen that haven't had business cards, okay? That should have been a red flag, like clear as day for me. I was new to the hobby. I was naive. Learn from my mistakes. If they don't have business cards, run away. Run away, unless they're just like, oh, we just ran out, but here's our Facebook information. Here's this, here's whatever, okay? You should be able to have some form of contact information, especially if you are buying an animal from them. You should be able to reach out after the fact. Get business cards, get contact information, have some sort of tie to them. And tip number 10, very important, have fun. Reptile expos are so much fun, and depending on where you live, they might not come around that often. For me, I have to drive at least three to four hours for an expo, and they're only really in the fall and the spring. So have fun. It's so much fun to be just surrounded by like-minded people that really love reptiles because, you know, in our daily lives, we're surrounded by people that have dogs, have cats, like their fur babies, and can't quite understand why we like snakes and lizards and frogs and turtles and tortoises. So it's a lot of fun to go to these events and be surrounded by people that get it. And it's a great way to make connections, and it's just a good time. So even if you're not going to buy an animal, just to go and walk around, meet people, look at things, just get out of the house, and be surrounded in a reptile environment, it's just a lot of fun. So most importantly, have fun. All right, that is it for my 10 Reptile Expo tips. If you actually have any other tips to add, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Or if you found these helpful, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Maybe hit that subscribe button because I'll be taking you guys along with me to this expo in about a week or so. Um, and I'm hoping it'll be a good time. Maybe some surprises in there. I don't know. Um, so thank you guys. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.